Let's take a look at the circulatory system. Whenever we start with a new body system, it's important that we take a minute to think about what we use it for because that's the only reason we really care about it. If we think of the functions of the circulatory system, we can divide them into three main categories. First, we have transport. The circulatory system moves things around our body. Second, we have regulation. The circulatory system is involved in several homeostatic mechanisms that help maintain our internal body conditions. And third, the circulatory system is important for protection. It protects the body. Let's take a closer look at each of those three categories. When it comes to transportation, the first thing most people think of is that the circulatory system transports oxygen. And that's true, it's gonna carry oxygen from your lungs out to the rest of your body. But anywhere you're gonna carry oxygen, what are you gonna make that you're gonna to have to get rid of? Carbon dioxide. So the circulatory system is also important for carrying carbon dioxide from all the cells of your body back to your lungs so you can breathe it out. The circulatory system is also important for carrying nutrients about the body. We take in our nutrients through our mouths, they go into the digestive system, and then those nutrients are absorbed from the digestive system into the blood, and the blood carries nutrients like glucose, and amino acids, and fatty acids, and vitamins, and ions, and minerals, all through the body to all your various cells. And in the same way we take nutrients out to the cells, the circulatory system is important for carrying waste products away from the cells. Your cells generate a lot of waste products from breaking down um, proteins and nucleic acids, and these waste products have to be gathered from the cells and then carried to the areas of the body where they can be gotten rid of. These would be things like uh, bilirubin, um, urea, uric acid, creatinine, ammonia. Those are all waste products that the circulatory system carries out of the body. Mostly those are going to end up going to the liver, which can break down a lot of uh, waste products we don't need, or to the kidneys, which filter them out in the urine. A couple more things that the circulatory system is important for transporting that we don't usually think of very often include the hormones, Remember, hormones are signaling molecules that are released into the bloodstream, and then they travel through the body, through the blood, to their target cells. Um, things like insulin and glucagon for regulating blood sugar, uh, the pituitary gland hormones for metabolism and growth, um, uh, testosterone and estrogen for development of sexual organs. All of those are hormones that are found transported by the circulatory system. And cells are also transported by the circulatory system. We don't usually think about those separately, but there are cells that have to travel from one part of the body to the other, and they travel through the circulatory system. That second category of functions for the circulatory system was regulation. And there are several important things that your circulatory system regulates. One of those is your body temperature. When your body temperature gets too warm, then we dilate blood vessels in the skin. So we bring more blood to the skin and that helps to radiate out more heat. So your circulatory system, by controlling whether we're dilating blood vessels to get rid of heat or constricting blood vessels to maintain heat in the body, can have quite an impact on your body temperature. A second body condition that your circulatory system regulates is your blood pressure. We have to have adequate pressure in the blood in order for things to be circulated through the body, and the circulatory system regulates blood pressure both by regulating the rate of the heartbeat, so the more blood the heart pushes out, the higher the blood pressure will be, but also by regulating again the diameter of the blood vessels. If we dilate blood vessels, making them wider throughout the body, that will reduce the pressure. If we constrict the blood vessels, that's going to raise the blood pressure. Along with body temperature and blood pressure, the circulatory system also is important for helping to regulate water movement through the body. Water is found in your body in several different compartments. That's what we call the areas in your body that contain water. We have what we call the intracellular compartment. That's found inside the cells. We have the interstitial compartment. That's the fluid that's around your cells. It's often referred to as the tissue fluid. And then we have the actual fluid in the blood itself, or the plasma. 
your circulatory system is involved in regulating the balance of water between the amount of water that's in the blood and the amount of water that's in the tissue, that interstitial fluid. And it's important to make sure we get enough water out into the tissues so that they don't dehydrate, but we don't want too much water out in the tissues or we see swelling. The fourth body condition regulated by the circulatory system is the pH. If you remember what pH is all about, pH stands for potential of hydrogen, and it's a measure of the amount of hydrogen ion in a solution. It's really important that we maintain the appropriate level of hydrogen ion, the appropriate pH, in our blood. Your blood pH should stay between about 7.35 and 7.45, so right around 7.4. If it gets too high or too low, proteins unfold, cells don't work, and we don't work. The way the circulatory system regulates pH is with buffers. Buffers are molecules that can either bind to H plus if you have too much or can release H plus if you don't have enough. That way they help to maintain a relatively stable pH. So if you have too much H plus in your blood, buffers will bind to that. If you don't have enough, buffers will release H plus to help bring the level back up. There are lots of molecules in your blood that act as buffers to help keep the pH of the blood relatively stable. A lot of proteins and amino acids in the blood can either bind to or release hydrogen ion as needed. And there's also one really important buffer system in the blood. It's called the bicarbonate buffer system. This is the most important buffer system in your blood. And it is due to carbonic acid in your blood. Carbonic acid is a natural byproduct of combining carbon dioxide, which your cells make all the time, with water, which is in your cells all the time. So we can make carbonic acid all the time. This carbonic acid can release hydrogen ions, so it can uh, break apart into H plus and bicarbonate, HCO3 minus. So if you don't have enough hydrogen ion, the carbonic acid will release hydrogen ion and that helps to bring your blood pH down when it gets too high. On the other hand, the bicarbonate ion, that HCO3 minus, can bind to hydrogen ions. And so if your blood pH is too low because you have too much hydrogen ion, bicarbonate can bind to those hydrogen ions and bring your blood pH back up where it belongs. The third category of circulatory system functions is protection. One of the main ways the circulatory system protects us is through the white blood cells in the blood. The white blood cells are an important part of the immune system that helps to protect the body against diseases, uh, toxins, and other sorts of dangerous substances. Related to that is the process of inflammation. The circulatory system participates in inflammation, which is a local responsive tissue to damage of any kind, whether it's damage caused by an infection by bacteria or damage caused by a scrape or a bump. Uh, anytime you damage tissue, it responds with inflammation. The function of inflammation is to prevent further damage and heal whatever damage was caused. So that falls under the protection category for functions of the circulatory system. Another important protection function of the circulatory system is clotting. Blood clotting is important for protection in two ways. First, it blocks any openings in the skin so that things can't get in. And second, it keeps blood from getting out so you don't lose fluids and become dehydrated or anemic. 